So Uncle Big Dave again, I'm back. I'm back again with my technical assistant, your favorite guy, Jackson Howell. Jackson Howell, what's the best part about doing these lectures with me? Isn't it spending quality time with your father? Definitely not. I can't believe you just said that. Go, get away from me. Now I'm upset. All right, are you ready? It's going to be on relative humidity and orographic uplift. A little assignment. Not too hard for you, I hope. First of all, absolute humidity is uh, the amount of water vapor in the air, H2O in the air, moisture in the air, measured mass over volume. The mass is grams of water vapor, the volume is a meter cube. The thing we're going to use, right, the most, and the term you hear on the news the most at night, right, when listening to the, uh, the weather forecaster, is relative, relative humidity. Relative humidity is the ratio of what is actually in the air compared to the max amount of water vapor the air can hold. The max amount of water vapor the air can hold is based on temperature. The warmer the air, the more water vapor it can hold. So again, relative humidity is a ratio of what is actually in the air, which would be absolute humidity, over the max amount of water vapor the air can hold, which is determined by temperature. So I'm going to give you two examples like the problems you will have in your assignment. The first example, the absolute humidity is 30 grams per cubic meter. The air temperature in this example is 40 degrees Celsius, which is pretty warm. The max amount of water vapor the air can hold at 40 degrees Celsius is 50 grams per cubic meter. So I'm going to put the absolute humidity as the numerator. The max will be the denominator, 50 grams per cubic meter. 30 over 50, 60%. If you know how to do that, you would divide 50 and then 30, and then move the decimal over 2. Second example, absolute humidity is 15 grams per cubic meter. The air temperature happens to be 22 degrees Celsius in this example. Uh, the maximum amount of water vapor the air can hold at 22 degrees Celsius is 20 grams per cubic meter. So the numerator is 15 grams, that's what's actually in the air, the absolute humidity. The max amount of water vapor the air can hold is 20 grams per cubic meter. 15 over 20 is 75%. So you'll have two simple examples like this to do, or two problems to do in your assignment. The second part of your assignment, you'll have an orographic uplift problem to do. So orographic uplift occurs when air hits a mountain range and is forced to rise. So the way to make it rain is to make the air rise. So there's a few different ways to do it make the surface air really warm and that air will rise. That's called convectional uplift. Or you can force two air masses together and the air has to rise. Or you can run the air into a mountain range and then the air is forced to rise. Like where I lived for many years in Three Rivers, up in the mountains, we get lots of orographic precipitation. Up Sequoia National Park, we get a lot of snow. You know, orographic precipitation also because storms tend to come in off of the Pacific. Right? And they travel from west to east across the United States. These things are called mid-latitude cyclones. A lot of the storms we get in the winter, both in San Luis Obispo and over in uh, Three Rivers. The air hits the mountains and it's forced to rise. So as it rises, first it cools off with something called the dry adiabatic collapse rate, which happens to be 5.5 degrees Fahrenheit for every 1,000 feet that it goes up. If the air begins to condense, in other words, clouds start to form and maybe rain or snow, switch to a different rate. The air does not cool off as fast. It cools off with something called the wet adiabatic lapse rate, 3.2 degrees Fahrenheit per 1,000 feet. Once the air comes down the leeward side of the mountain, we switch back to the warmer rate, the dry adiabatic lapse rate. The air heats up as it comes down at 5.5 degrees Fahrenheit per 1,000 feet. So when air rises, it cools adiabatically. When air descends, a parcel of air, it heats adiabatically. So here's the problem, and you'll have one like this on your assignment. I'm going to start an air parcel at 68 degrees Fahrenheit. So we're at sea level, at zero. It's going to hit the mountains and be forced to rise. That's called orographic uplift. So we're going to go from sea level to 5,000 feet. So I'm going to go 5.5 times 5 for 5,000 feet gives me 27 degrees cooler than it was at sea level. So if I take 68 at sea level, subtract the 27.5 at 5,000 feet, that air parcel that started at sea level should be 40.5 degrees Fahrenheit. So here's my clouds here, precipitation is current. We 
We're still going up the mountain. We're going from 5,000 to 11,000 feet. That's 6,000 feet. Because the air is condensing, right, now it's cooling off at 3.2 per thousand feet. That's called the wet adiabatic glass rate. So 3.2 times 6 is 19.2. I'm going to take the temperature at 5,000 feet, which is 40.5. I'm going to subtract 19.2 from that. It gives me 21.3 at the top of the mountain, which means it's probably snowing up there. You can go snowboarding and all that fun stuff. The air then comes down the leeward side, and since it's not rising, it's going to heat up. And it heats up at the dry 80 bag glass rate. So I'm going to go from 11,000 feet to 4,000 feet on the leeward side. That is going to be 7,000 feet. So 5.5 times 7 is 38.5. Since we're heating up on the way down, I'm going to add that to 21.3. 21.3 plus 38.5 gives me 59.8 on the leeward side of the mountain at 4,000 feet. So you'll have a problem very similar to that to do on this assignment. Get after it. See you guys soon. Jack, cut me off.